Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. Now I've talked about how you want to start on a small project, work your way up to a bigger project, build confidence, right? Now, I was pretty scared of building boats until I built this. I had to build it and I rushed it and despite everything, it came out really good in my opinion. So, I decided to build this. Now, this is a little bit more complex, obviously, but this is a great example, this is a great build for me to show you what I wanna do with this new format of tutorials because I feel like a lot of the stuff in this boat makes no sense whatsoever except if you're me or if you're playing in my campaign. Let's get right into it and I'll show you what I mean. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe. Now I'm not gonna spend a lot of time telling you how to measure this stuff simply because I don't think I've measured anything since I've started in this channel. A lot of the time I'm winging all the measurements. As you can tell, I build the bottom, the base for it, and then I use that for all the measurements. Not everything has to be perfect. One of the reasons why I don't measure, it's not that I'm confident, is that I have a good idea what I want it to look like. I look at a lot of different references. What I'm basing a lot of these boats on are boats from One Piece. It's a pirate anime show that I love. And funny enough, the boat builder in that show is named Frankie. And he's badass. But I'm getting sidetracked. Back to references. I will have a lot of references for you if you follow me on Instagram. You'll be able to get a lot of different angles of the boat. And maybe if you like, you can just build small sections of it and kind of test out what you actually want to build. Now back to the tutorial. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to make some steps, trying to make it look like there's a downstairs but I don't want to actually make them. I just want to give the illusion of it. These stairs are heading in the downstairs of the front of the ship. So on the top platform, I kind of want to hint that the steps are there. That's what this circle's for. The illusion will only work if I paint it right, which I don't know if I did, but it's not something I disliked about the project. For the platform on the back, I'm actually gonna build a little something something. This little room is gonna be facing forward, so I only need to worry about the design on the front of it. So I'm basically working a door and a wall. That's all I'm doing here. I'm just gonna take this outside and texture it using a wire brush. I am gonna build a frame around the door, but first I wanna distinguish the pattern on the door from the wall. So I made it go in a different way. Which is kinda messed up cause the texture I did, I did it up and down. So if you're building this, don't be a Frankie, think ahead. For the frame, I'm simply using some styrofoam board and I'm texturing it using the blade this time because I don't like the way the wire brush textures this foam. It comes out better if I texture it with the blade. It's my opinion, if you like it the other way, you know, do, do your thing. Now this is where I might lose you. I'm lost. This is where I build this part, the barracuda. The bear who? Now, why the hell would I do a fish? Let me explain why. I crafted this a while ago. Now a lot of people ask, what's the weakness? Well, if you're fighting it with a group of people, it really doesn't have a weakness, unless you have a boat. This boat is not gonna help you against this. This guy is gonna mess this guy up. Oh man, my mom sees this, she's gonna say I'm playing with toys even at this age. The Barracuda ship is meant to pick up as much speed 
going in one direction. The point of this is to stab this before this guy shoots this. You're asking, why is there metal here, but not metal here? Why isn't this made out of metal? In the world I'm running, this is actually the strongest material. These monsters are actually made of material that's stronger than actual metal. That's why you have copper here, but the main piece right here is actually carved from this wood. Now, you're wondering, how the hell do they carve it if it's so powerful? Well, the only people in the world that know how to carve that wood is goblins. Goblins have never shared this information with any other race in the world. This is what I meant when I said every boat has a story in my story. All right, so if I haven't lost you, let's carve that fish head. So the easiest way to start this is by pretending you're carving a crystal spike. You know, that's a build everybody's done before, I guess, I think. So if you look at it that way, it just might be a little bit easier to start yourself off. Then I draw a mouth. Then I draw eyes. Whoa, man, that's crazy. From here, it's as simple as tracing those same lines in two different angles. And then it's hot. It's tight. It's nice. I'm proud of this one. Yeah, yeah. It's not even the most complicated thing I've done. But it's nice. Make sure I don't mess up on any work that I've already done. I don't scratch this with a wire brush either. I go and do the blade thing. Now something I forgot to do was actually go back with something that's not as thin. I could have made those details really stand out. I, I thought that this would be enough and it was okay but it just wasn't enough. I also want to make it look like it's been carved out of a tree so that's why I did that nut right there. To make sure I can trust my players with this boat, I pin the head using a skewer and some hot glue. I texture all my surfaces at this point and I start carving the texture of the woods, the planks. And again, I'm just kind of winging it. That means this part too. While building this part, I kept in mind the pictures I showed you before of Fletcher and Spider Dog crafting and the way they did the wood design. They were both able to get a deeper cut on the pink foam and the wire. I didn't just do it straight. I did a little bit of a wave, which is what I should have been doing this whole time. I just never thought about it until I saw their work. This is the part of the project where you look at this and say, wait a minute, this guy that's teaching us how to craft doesn't know what he's doing. I never claimed to know what I was doing. I just claimed to have fun while I was doing it. This part's messy as hell. This part right here, the small piece, is gonna be my step to the upstairs. You saw me, I already glued one, but as you can tell, I'm not doing it in any fancy way. I'm literally putting another piece of board right underneath it. Have it good enough for my mini to stand on it. You see my mini over there, Dennis. I see you, chilling. And boom, just glue it. That's it, homie, blah. Now I know what you're saying. Man, that wasn't messy at all. What you talking about? Oh, okay, okay, you wanna see messy? I show you messy. Say hello to my messy friend. 
All right, that was my one stupid moment per video. My bad. I didn't have one on the other one. Oh, that means I still have another one. Okay. They stack. They stack. And stacking is what I'm doing right here. Okay, so this, before you finish, this is not going to look good. But you got to remember that we're going to be gluing stuff on top of it. Nobody's going to see this. So that's why I don't give it too much attention. I just make sure it's stable enough to hold my top platform. The way I do it is in four layers. Each layer has support with the exception of the very last one of course. But it starts with support, steps, support, platform. <laughs> Just take a look at my madness. Wait, real quick, if you're smart, paint everything black right now. You gotta do it before you glue the top platform. It's really hard to get in the crevices sometimes. That's the one thing I forgot to do. My bad. But don't make the same mistake as me. Don't be a Frankie. Right here I'm having Dennis test the steps. If he falls, he's dead to me. You're dead, Dennis. Alright, after that you've done all the testing, just glue it. Glue it already. No, don't glue it yet. Paint the area first. Now, a real quick tip from Frankie D. Fancy. Don't forget to make it look fancy at the nails on the boards. How are people gonna know this is a real board? Man, come on, Frankie, you dropping the ball. This is Frankie D. Fancy out. Now you're seeing me glue a lot of the pieces together. I have a bad mindset sometimes where I think that painting is the very last step and I actually make a few mistakes because of it before you glue this platform you actually want to paint the front of this make sure it's painted it's just easier no not again kind of think of what spots are gonna be hard to reach and paint them before you actually glue them on the good thing about not having to come up with a project all from scratch like I'm doing here is that at least you have the foresight of my mistakes to fix yours or to make sure you don't make your mistakes. Right here, the reason I'm using foam instead of actual wood, like a stick, is because That's my gun. it's easier for me to make this look like wood than actual wood, if that makes sense. Oh no, Dennis died. Again. What a smart person would have done here, um, they would have textured the stick before they glued it. That's what I get for killing Dennis twice. Before I had ever built any of these boats for D&D, this was the most intimidating part of it all. Now, when I do it, I just make sure that I get one side right. I basically line up my boat to the height I want the sides to be. I do this for every floor on the boat. I also mark every corner and every slope. From here you just draw the design you want on the boat. I want to make it look slick, but also I want to make it look fish-like. So the end of it is going to be like a fin and the front part's going to look smaller than the back part. Make it look faster. I don't know if that's how it works, but that's how it works in my mind. I can't stress enough the importance of having a reference. You saw me had a look at a fish. Also, make sure that your sidings are long enough to cover the boat. You want to almost run your boat like a wheel over the sidings just to make sure it's the right size. After that, you just cut it out. Now, if you want, you can make keys out of these. What I mean by that is when you cut your main piece, the base, what you can do is you can trace it with the white foam and keep it as a key. Then, the one we just cut out, keep it as a key. And from now on, you literally just use the keys to make all your boats look the same. That's not my style. Like I said, every boat has to look different for me because I've watched too much anime. There's some cool boats out there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have some basic boats. Gotta have some 
Some cool boats, man. I gotta make a dragon boat. Now, obviously, we can't forget about that back. So, that's what I'm doing right here. And obviously, you can make a key out of this one too. Boom. Next time on Frankie D Crafter. Will Dennis be revived? Will Frankie finish that boat? Will Frankie tell you how he came up with everything? Who really is Frankie D Fancy? Stay tuned next Thursday. Alright guys, sorry for leaving you on a cliff, but I feel like the video was getting too long and I don't want to overwhelm you. I figure that we get the basics done and from here we can start making different boats. So we learn how to make the base for the boat. Next episode, it's gonna be about making it different. So from here on, I'll just be making episodes all starting on part two. We already know how to make the base for it. We're just gonna find different ways to decorate them. Thank you very much again, guys. I hope to see you next time on part two on how to build a Frankie boat.